Hey people, you found the Hillbilly Voodoo channel. If you've been following us for a while, you know that we've got a Colchester Triumph lathe here that we were trying to get powered up. Well, we finally got it to turn, turn round and round and it's not quite a usable thing yet because the VFD that I have is too small for it. So we're gonna have to come up with some other idea. But in the meantime, I realized that Hey, we got this really fancy multi-fix tool post here. But guess what? We don't have no tool post holders for it. So in the meantime, I'm gonna have to build myself a four-way tool post of some type just so that I can use this lathe until I can either find some of the fancy holders that go here, or maybe I have actually three of these tool post holders Maybe find somebody to trade one holder for some of the little things that hold the bit things. Yeah, that things. So anyways, we're going to build ourselves a four-way tool post. Just kind of a normal one, not the lantern style tool post holder, but a four-way tool post holder. We'll go wander around outside, dig around in our piles of ground obtainium and see what we can find to build this tool post holder out of. So if there's question about what a four-way tool post holder is, this is what a four-way tool post holder is. This is a really, really tiny, tiny version of one on my really, really tiny, tiny lathe. So we're gonna make this, we're gonna make it much, much larger. Now I was wandering around looking at all my junk. And I found two of these. Now, if there is ever any question about what kind of crap hoarding god I really am. I found these plates of steel when I was 10 years old. I drug them home. They've been kicking around in my dad's shop for 20 years. And then they were kicking around in my shop for 20 years. So that'll give you an idea of how dedicated I am to recycling junk. When somebody's kicking crap around for that amount of time. Well... Eventually, you always use something, right? So, I got two of these plates. They're about four inches wide, I believe. One inch thick. So, we're going to build a bigger version of that out of that. Stick around. I'm going to clean these up and start marking them up. And watch the Hillbilly Voodoo in action. Little bit of history as to where these plates came from they were lifting rings on the ferry ramp on the kootenai lake ferry on the anscombe ferry yeah that's a mouthful anybody that's lived in the kootenays knows what the anscombe ferry was way way back in the day these were on the, on the ramp hydraulic cylinders lifted the ramp kind of thing like that and they were chopped off during a refit and thrown on the beach and we were playing on the beach and I found them and I drug them home. So one man's junk's another man's treasure, right? Well, let's go clean these up and make something out of them now. Now I got this piece of steel wall cleaned up here. I'm going to take some Sharpie, use it as layout fluid. And I'm going to try to find the cleanest piece of steel that I can make a square chunk out of here. There's going to be a whole lot of uh, marking lines and points and stuff and might be a little bit boring. So I probably won't bore you with the whole process, but anyways, black Sharpie. Coloring it all in so that I can see the lines that I'm scribing on here. A little better because my eyes aren't great and the light ain't great in here so we use this as a layout fluid a blowing of sorts and it is cold in here today you can see my breath i don't know whether winter is coming or going or deciding it's going to go right from winter to spring or what the heck's going on but it's 22 degrees Celsius yesterday, and it's almost down to freezing again today, so 
Well, about this climate change thing, it just can't make up its mind whether it's going to get hot or cold. But it's definitely, uh, definitely getting weird. So anyways, I'll get this all marked up here. I'll scribe a bunch of lines. I'll cut out a square chunk. And then I'll bring you back and show you what I'm going to do with it. Because watching me color, it's probably pretty painful. So I got our square cut out here. Got a whole bunch of lines marked, a whole bunch of holes. Maybe you can see that stuff punched out there on camera. I'm going to take it and go poke a bunch of holes in here and thread all these for half inch bolts. I'll bring it back and show you what it looks like when I'm done. Well, that there is what it looks like. You didn't want to sit around and watch me drill a bunch of holes, did you? That's kind of boring, but they're all threaded. That's the center hole, and I haven't really decided what size of post that's going to go through to attach this to the lathe yet, so I didn't drill that. A few marks where they cut it off with the torch, but that'll be... Well, I guess we'll put it like this so that the, the surface where the bits are sitting will be here. Maybe we'll round the edges off or something. I'm, I'm not too sure yet, but that's what it looks like. So now we're going to cut another plate exactly the same, but we're not going to put all the holes in it. We're just going to put a hole through the center and that will be the bottom that will sit onto the cross slide. So let's go make that. I already cut the piece out. I just got to drill the hole. All we got to do is drill a center hole because you don't need bolts going through that one. It's not making sense yet. It will in a minute. So this is where we're at so far. This is going to be the base. I cut another piece of steel and precision ground it into a two inch square. Yeah, right. Precision ground it. I cut a chunk of steel with my angle grinder and stuck it on my belt sander. That's, that's about as precision grinding as we're going to get around here. So this is going to be the middle. And this will be the top. Kind of looks a four-sided tool post, I guess. Yep. So, what am I going to do here? I'm going to bolt these two together. Well, first I'm going to give a bit of a chamfer on this edge here. I'm going to bolt these two together so they're nice and square. I'm going to run a bead of weld in here. I'm going to chamfer this good enough that when I weld it, It'll penetrate nice and deep, and then I can grind it all flat down again. And I was thinking of doing the same thing with mounting the top, but I don't really want to do that because I want to make this tool post adjustable of some type so that I can raise the top or lower the top so that I can put larger things in there. So I think I'm going to drill four holes through and then tap this block so that I can, yeah, bolt that top down onto there. So that if I ever want to remove it and put shims underneath here, then I can raise that all up. Does that kind of sort of make sense? Kind of sounds like a good idea to me. I don't know if it's going to be a good idea, but we'll, we'll figure it out here. So maybe I'll mark this up first. Drill the holes in this. Then I'll put that on to that, drill the holes into that so we know everybody lines up right. And then I can weld that on there. That sounds like maybe a better, better route to go here. So I'll color all over this and mark up some lines and drill some holes for the bolts to go through and see if it works. So this is what I ended up coming up with. Weld this down. To the bottom plate, drilled four holes and tapped them, drilled the hole through for the center T-bolt that goes through like that. That's what holds it on the cross slide. Got me so far? Drilled out the center for that cross slot or for that bolt also. Drilled and countersunk holes for bolts and we're going to bolt this onto that 
and then run the bolt through the bottom and hopefully everything will work out right here. I did mark it so that I knew how it went together, but I may have ground off my marks. May have. Oh, no, they're still there. Okay, so this should go like this. This should go like that. That should go through the bottom. And that will be on the top. I'm probably going to build a big washer for here so it distributes it a little bit better, but I don't have one built yet, so we're just going to do it like this. Kind of looks like a like a tool post holder, don't it? Or, I don't know. Is it a tool post holder? Is it a tool post? Is it a tool holder? whatever the hell you want to call it it looks like it's going to work now i need some bolts that'll go through here to squeeze onto the tool i got some grade 8 bolts here i don't have enough of them right now i gotta go wander around and see what else i can find i'm pretty sure i have some genuine cat bolts around if anybody ever wonders why cat track vehicles or any type of cat equipment is so expensive is because cat vehicles actually have I might have one here somewhere yeah I do even got the C printed on the end of the bolt so that's why you pay so much for cats but anyways gonna have to build some bolts that these ones will go through far enough I think but I want a square head on them instead of the hexagonal head so that probably a half inch so that I can use a half inch square drive on the top so see what we can do with these I don't have enough like I said but I can start out and make some of that I can just try this out well it's not operational yet so it's not a big huge hurry for it but let's see what we can do with this bolt I got a few of them here and make some hold downy things now, if anybody is curious how I'm squaring off the ends of these bolts, I have the bolt mounted here in the lathe, and I'm just whacking it down till it's flush with the bolt. And I figure this is a half inch bolt. Now, if I square it down flush, then it will give me a half inch wide square, and I can take an old socket that I have, not this one in particular, but I have another one that the inside of the socket's all stripped out. But I can use the square end as the drive on that bolt. Does that make sense? I'm hoping it'll work. I'm not, I've never tried it before, but kind of looks like it would be a real thing. So let's finish squaring this up and see if this idea is going to work. Let's see if my brilliant idea here was a brilliant idea or a total flop got that end all squared up there okay fits in there pretty good should be fairly should do what i want it to anyways now i just got another really maybe intelligent thought i have a half inch extension around here about that long that i got seriously po'd at because the ball bearing had fell out and the socket kept falling off. So I kind of had a vanilla gorilla moment and gave it a chuck somewhere and threw it somewhere. And But that might actually work as the tool for these to put those in there. And then one end will have that square and the other end will have that square. And I can use that square in the chuck. 
So if I can manage to find a, or figure out where I threw that thing or how far away I threw that thing, then I'll use that. And if not, then I'll find an, a, a socket that's all munged up, which I have lots of those, and I'll build a tool out of that. I've turned the threads down on the end of these bolt, or on the end of this bolt, <coughs> excuse me, so that when I thread it down in there and it's squishing down on the tool and that end gets all mushroomed out, I can still get this bolt out of here and replace it if it gets all buggered up. Yeah, so maybe I'll make a couple more. I think I have two or three more bolts here. And we'll stick this thing on the lathe. We'll be able to see if it works, but we'll see if it fits on the lathe at least. Looks like our tool post is going to be a real thing here. Better bolt it down there. Goes back and forth. So we can adjust it, tighten that nut up. It'll lock it down. Got a tool in there. And it's squished down with our little bolt. I'll have to get some more grade 8 bolts when I do my weekly venture into civilization because I kind of want some good ones, not some munged up ones. So I'll start out with something half decent. Yeah, I hope it's going to work. I'm going to have to make some shims so that I can set the tool height, but that's not a big deal. If you're liking this build, then you should probably hit that subscribe button because we're going to be doing all kinds of tooling up with this lathe. I'm not going to buy anything. I'm going to build it. So I don't really have any tooling at all for a lathe this big. So we'll have to build some live centers and all kinds of other things for it. So hit the subscribe button and you can follow along on this adventure. And if you like it, well, give me a thumbs up. So I think we're gonna we're gonna end this video here. I don't, don't really see too much more that I can do on this without well getting some more bolts and stuff. So oh, my light went out. Anyways, till next time. Use what you got to make what you want.